I think it's pretty well established and I'm not exactly Rob Zombie fan. I, I know that the guy has his following, but his particular brand of filmmaking just does not appeal to me at all. But, but I thought it might be interesting to check out the timeline of his most famous property, the Firefly family. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do that. I, I guess I don't really have a bunch to say to set it up. Like I, like I know that some people out there are probably psyched that I'm doing this, and there's others that are the uh, opposite of psyched. Uh, but let's see if the clan has a continuity, or if they're just gonna be a bunch of rejects. We start back in 2003 with Rob Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses, but it actually began back in 2000 when the film was originally meant to be released before a series of studio shenanigans caused it to sit on a shelf and then jump from company to company. We're told that it's just before Halloween on 1977 and Michael J. Pollard is here, acting probably the most normal I've ever seen him act, and the spider baby is on hand, done up as a clown. Spalding runs this little shop and they kill a couple of robbers with the help of Irwin Keys. We then have a beat farmer and a guy that's now more known for talking about shows and movies than actually being in them. They and their two lady friends are out on the road writing about cool travel spots and Spalding's little museum is on their agenda. He has this murder ride that discusses famous killers, which talks about Dr. Satan, who was never caught, and Denise calls her dad and he has a calendar up, but this is supposed to be October of 77, uh, but those days don't line up here. The first and second are a Friday and Saturday, and the months in 77 that that happened were April and July, and didn't happen again all the way until September of 78. But Pops says that Halloween is on a school night, so they're trick-or-treating tonight, and he has the 30th circle. So I think that it's the calendar for 77, but the days just lined up differently in this universe. Curiously, that's how the days lined up in the October of 1976. So they were either planning on that year at one point, or the set designer just wasn't paying attention because we know it's not 76, because A, the opening told us that it was 77, but also there's a missing poster for this girl who was last seen in August of 77. As they search for the tree where Dr. Satan was hanged, they pick up a hitchhiker and it's everyone's favorite actress, Sherry Moon Zombie, Rob, wife of Rob, although at this point they weren't married. Their car breaks down, so they head up to the hitchhiker's house, which you can see on the studio tour at Universal Studios. It's the same house from the best little whore house in Texas, and Chop Top lives there, as does the fighter of the Zuni doll, and also Tiny, played by the massive Matthew McGrory, who was seven foot six. And like, how is this not Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Like, bunch of young folk on a cross country trip, stop at a rest stop and end up in an old house in the middle of nowhere populated by a crazy family including one that's larger than life and doesn't talk and wears a mask i mean there's even a grandpa involved and a dinner table scene i mean come on it even has one of the family members from a chainsaw movie they try to leave but are attacked and captured and the next morning it's revealed that they killed Bill and turned him into a fish sculpture. There's two cops and one of them is Otis and the other is pretty justified and I do want to point out that I would absolutely buy a cereal called Agatha Crispies. The family is watching the monsters and oh, oh no, and now I am having flashbacks about that travesty um, and the police find the house. The family quickly kill them and Denise's dad and then Otis wears his face and gee, where, where have I seen that before? They take Denise, Jerry and Mary to meet Dr. Satan dressed as bunnies and Mary runs but is killed 
by Baby. And oh, by the way, when people talk about Sherry Moon's acting and someone suggests that she's really not that bad of an actress, just nod and smile quietly because you are talking to a crazy person. Tossed into a dungeon, Denise discovers Dr. Satan cutting Jerry apart and encounters Earl, Mama's husband. And she tricks him so he's buried under rubble. She escapes the lair with Spalding picking her up, but of course, he's part of the family and she's on the doctor's table. And hey, what what, what happened to Michael J. Pollard and Erwin Keyes? Their, their characters just vanished and are never mentioned again in, in the entire series. Two years later, there was a sequel with 2005's The Devil's Rejects, and an opening text card says that we're picking up in the May of 1978. So we're about six months after the last one, and we see that search mission go down, briefly spotting Tiny. Evel is here, but he's a cop, and the family is back, but Mama is now Sergeant Callahan, and there's a massive shootout. They kill Rufus and arrest Mama, but Otis and Baby escape. There's a quick flash of Mary Warrenov, whose license plate expires in February of 78, and this is May, so I guess if she wasn't dead, she would need to take care of that. Spalding is having a fling with the legendary Ginger Lynn, and when someone asks me why I'm not a big fan of Zombies films, I simply mention that he felt the need to film Sil Haig's ball sack. They head to a safe house hotel where you'll find Peter, Pluto, and Dottie all working. And there's a band staying at the hotel that includes Terry and the Cookie Monster Metal Guy, and a brief flash of Daniel Roebuck on the TV box, and they take the group hostage. There's a cameo from PJ Souls, I guess not asking if you like what you see, and it turns out that Sheriff Wydell's brother was George from the first movie. And Otis kills Roy and Adam while Baby takes out Gloria. Wendy is the only one left and she freaks out and runs, but is run over by the least observant truck driver ever, like, like there was plenty of time to stop. They hire Machete and Diamond Dallas to hunt them down, and the sheriff kills Mama, and the crew finally gets to the hotel. One hour and 15 minutes into the movie! The Unholy Two attack because Charlie sold them out, and the sheriff catches the trio. He torches them for a bit, but then doesn't kill them, and instead sets the house on fire and leaves. Charlie tries to help Baby, so he kills him, and he's about to kill Baby when Tiny shows up and breaks his neck, and then saves the others. They then drive off and encounter a police roadblock and drive into it. Shots are exchanged, and they're all shot up a whole bunch, and they die, so it's all over, right? Well, no. Because a full 14 years later, in 2019, there was a third part with three from hell. And we're told that it's the same morning that they were shot up, so it's still 1978. All three of the rejects somehow survived, taking 20 bullets each. A year passes as they recover and go to trial, and they become sort of folk heroes. For, for, for some reason, people are cheering them on, but even though they say the trial was very long, they're found guilty in January of 1979. So, they were given a verdict about nine months after their big showdown. We're then told that 10 years pass, so it, I guess it's 1989 now, and Spalding is old and frail, and this was a short amount of time before Sid Haig passed away. It's said that he was executed through injection, and Otis ends up on a chain gang with Rondo, who survived the events of the last film. But he's killed when a mysterious man shows up to free the Firefly, their half-brother played by creepy Richard Brake. Roebuck is back again, possibly a, a different news guy now, and Baby is denied parole, and Dee Wallace pops in, as does Bill Oberts Jr. And the pair come after their sister by taking hostages of the warden, with the ice cream man showing up as a clown. And they force the boss to go in and free her or they'll kill everyone there. 
Once loose, she kills Greta, and of course, as expected, everyone ends up killed anyway. That's Man, I'm <laughs> bored. Yeah. I I feel ya. There there isn't even a plot here. It's just been like a whole hour of let's get out of jail. And oh man, it's only half over. Roach is here, and then there's a newscaster named George Glass. So if Jan is watching, he is real. They head to Mexico, and hot damn, Richard Edison is in this. Can we get this guy in a big movie, please? He tips off Aquarius, who is the son of Rondo, and he brings an entire squad of guys with guns. But for some reason, they are all idiots and get picked off really easily. And like, Aquarius just points his gun at Foxy for some reason and is like, drop your gun. Dude, just, sh just shoot him. A and then there's another guy and he's all like, turn around, J just shoot. The only reason these people are still alive is because everyone that they're up against can't be bothered to kill them, I guess. He ties Baby and Foxy up again, not not killing them. So of course, they escape and win. And then that that's it. They they just they just drive off. So there you have it. 3 movies um that uh, I guess have actually a fairly solid continuity. They do make sense in terms of continuity. And uh, with the exception of that calendar not really lining up to the, the real world's dates, everything makes sense. So continuity-wise, it's a big win. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not into these, not really at all. Uh, I, I kind of like the beginning of House of a Thousand Corpses, where it's basically just Texas Chainsaw Massacre again, um, which is fine. But then after that, it just kind of just, I don't know, it just goes all downhill. Rob Zombie just does not know how to write dialogue between characters at all. Um, people are all horrible, there's no one to root for, and there's no plot. There's no storyline that carries through an entire movie. That's my biggest beef, is like, it's basically just like, rambling adventure, um, and uh, pointless adventure. So, just not a fan. Um, if you are, let me know down below in the comments. I'd like to hear what you guys think of these movies down below, and uh, tell me if you enjoy them, or if you hate them. Uh, back me up on the hate. Um, let me know that down there. Also, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Hit subscribe if you enjoy what you see on the channel and click the bell so you get notified when new videos come out. And if you want to, go to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash movie timelines. You can help support this channel, which I would appreciate that. And I certainly appreciate you watching. So I'll see you very shortly for another great video. Thanks a lot, guys, and bye-bye.